father had died. And I was driving up the coast thinking about my father, who was gone all of only a few weeks, and thinking about what could I do to honor him. He was a very interesting, very creative guy. And I stopped just to look at the ocean and think about stuff and look down and there I saw this piece of property that I'd never noticed before. Um, Slide Ranch um, is a nonprofit environmental education center and uh, educational farm. So we're 134 acres, but a lot of that is just coast lands that have been preserved um, that is mostly for the animals and the birds um, that are using that as their habitat. Um, but part of the ranch, we also have um, trails that we use as hiking um, for all the groups that come here, an educational garden um, just up the hill. We have a barn um, and pasture area where we rotate our goats and sheep around and also take people up there to learn about the ruminants. In 1970 is when Side Ranch as a nonprofit actually started. Um, and our who we think of as our founder, Doug Ferguson, was a 27-year-old lawyer at the time. And he helped um, purchase this land and um, sort of get it put into a trust so that it would be available for everybody to use. I got curious about it and looked into uh, at, the, at the assessor's office, who owned this piece of land? And I found out that it was owned by a Hollywood scriptwriter, which didn't make any sense, until I found out that he wanted to build apartment houses there. And I looked down and said, boy, that would be a shame. This is a beautiful piece of land. This should be a park or something. So I eventually persuaded the scriptwriter to sell what he thought was worth $10 million for the $150,000 that I had to help buy it. There are about 15 people um, that live on Slide Ranch, and some of those people are the teachers and residents who change every year. It's kind of an incubator program where they get a lot of training here and then go on and work and live elsewhere. And then uh, about uh, six other staff live here permanently. Mostly I think I've learned about um, how to sort of step into a leadership role, especially with kids, and manage a group so that they all feel safe and feel heard and feel like they belong here. So we talk a lot about, um, do you drink milk at home? Do you eat cheese? Do you eat yogurt? Um, if you do, then somewhere an animal was milked, um, you know, in a morning or an evening, and it might have been a goat, um, just like Amber. I guess I miss, um, I was gonna say meeting new people, but on the other hand, like kids are coming every single day. What we get from our chickens is mostly eggs, but like I said, there's some uh, there's some chickens that we raise only for meat. So we raise maybe 60 or or so, maybe a little more uh, chickens a year, uh, with the intention of, of slaughtering them for meat. And uh, likewise, the the lambs and occasionally the goats, we will slaughter for meat. The first time I did it, I think I was just totally enthralled, really. And as I've gone on to be in the position I am now, where I lead it. I think I've gotten, it's gotten almost more problematic in terms of having that additional level of responsibility for um, taking the life of an animal. And, uh, and I, feel, I feel fairly at peace with it. eating amazing delicious meals every night and we have animals that depend on us and a beautiful garden that's flourishing right now and um, we're all sharing the work so that it doesn't feel too much for anyone and then also um, the interpersonal like we're picking up each other's slack when we're tired and when we're grouchy and when you have a little extra you can give a little more. I mean I think living in a city would be a totally different ball game in terms of your community can be so much wider like you have kind of non-stop access to like um, music, arts, entertainment, um, and like you can be a more uh, 
active member of whatever kind of community groups or, or things you're, you're interested in. Um, but here, you know, the trade-off is here I have this very tight-knit community of, of people that I work with. You walk out of the door and you see your friend and uh, we have a nice communal lawn right in front of all the houses where we play catch and frisbee and pick up soccer. So that's nice. And then we have a kitchen that we all share that's decked out with everything you'd ever want and need and you can get really creative in there. Um, so it's, um, it's really great. It's like an amazing place to live. Many of the kids and particularly some of the teachers have learned themselves what you can do to save land. My life has been dedicated to the proposition that people should do good, that they should really try to leave the world a better place than when they found it. It's a constantly in balance, the, the, the duel between good and evil. And uh, if we can just keep it sorta of even, we're pretty well off. different, but not necessarily better than it was when we all came onto the planet.